on this edition of Around BCC. It's back to work at all BCC campuses as the 2014-2015 academic year gets underway and we sit with President Sprague up. BCC finds a new home in Concord and those visiting the Fall River campus will be met with some parking challenges. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Thibault. We are entering our 15th academic year of providing news, notes about the people, the events, and the academic programs here at Bristol Community College, and we're pleased to do it. And as we have done for the past 14 seasons, we like to begin the new academic year by spending a few moments and speaking with the president of Bristol Community College, Dr. John Sprager. Dr. Sprager, thank you. Happy New Year. We yeah, say this every time year. this year. Every year. I can't uh, believe uh, 14 of them have gone by. Yeah, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. We're, we're only 25 years old, yeah. so to be here yes. for 15 years. That's right. Started really <laughs> young. So again, thank you for joining oh, us. My and, pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, another great academic year on tap here at Bristol Community College, and I want to start a little bit by talking about the 2013-2014 academic year. Mm -hmm. and, and we spoke before we got on the air, I was listing, listing some of the things that happened here at BCC over the past year. And it's been, it's been a busy year and there's a lot going on right now and we'll get to a lot of it. But yes. I wanna start, last year this time we talked about how important it was for BCC to become accredited, to become recognized as an accredited institution. Yes. Every 10 years, the college needs to go through an accreditation process with the New England um, Association of Secondary Schools and Colleges, NEAS, yeah, yeah, close. Yes. Um, and, and 2014 was the year where BCC was to be uh, looked at for accreditation. So last academic year, a lot of effort and resources went toward that NEASC process. Mm -hmm. Talk about how that went and where it, it's expected to go as we will probably hear more this fall about it. Go yeah, ahead. it's not over yet. Right. You're right. But this, this actually began three years ago uh, in a preparation inside the college for our self-study. Right. It's an opportunity for us to self-examine and uh, review all of the things that we're doing and uh, uh, assess that in a, in a formal document known as a self-study. And we send that to the NEASC uh, organization and the visiting team is selected. Uh, these are all experts at mm -hmm. other institutions and they come to visit and they did come, as you know, um, um, in March 30th. And they came and spent three days with us uh, looking at everything, absolutely mm -hmm. everything. NEASC is so well organized uh, that they have uh, 11 standards, uh, topics, if you will, uh, for the visiting team to look into a library, finance, academics, faculty, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, thank goodness the uh, uh, report from the team was uh, uh, very enthusiastic mm -hmm. and very praising of uh, all that we do at BCC, which I was expecting really, I mean, knowing, right. knowing how, how uh, carefully we do things and how excellent uh, our performance, uh, they saw the same thing. and. Uh, uh, so now they have submitted, uh, they, the team, have uh, submitted a uh, report to the uh, organization, NEASC, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be meeting with them in September uh, to uh, hear the final uh, decision about our accreditation, which I think is a foregone conclusion. Uh, it's not unusual for uh, NEASC to select certain topics and say, you know, we'd like to hear a little bit more from right. you in a couple years or next year. Mm -hmm. or, uh, the next major milestone is five years from now uh, when we present a written document, no visit, uh, and then 10 years later, uh, they'll be back. Do yeah. it all again. <laughs> That's right. But it was a terrific experience and thanks to all of the great work, it was so highly participatory. Uh, people from all across the college participated, including the trustees and foundation members, foundation board members. And it was just a wonderful experience, and I am very grateful for all of their uh, expertise and all of their uh, time that they put into such a great project. Mm -hmm. Looking back at the, at the past year, and we'll get to some of the projects that actually started last year that's, that's continuing in, into this mm -hmm. year, but one of the uh, big announcements was the creation of the Catch Institute. Yes. Which is uh, combining a number of of uh, service type uh, initiatives 
into one institute. And Ketch stands for Casino, Culinary Arts, yes. Tourism, Hospitality, and cas Casino and Hospitality. Yeah. That's Ketch. You got it all right there. Yes. And, um, you know, with the potential prospects of, of a casino here in southeast yes. of Massachusetts, there had been a casino program, but as, as we all know, those types of industries sort of dovetail in many ways, yes. and that's how yes. uh, Ketch was created, correct? Yes, yeah. Now, many of the casinos uh, uh, refer to themselves as resort uh, destinations, right. if you will, so that other things come into play, hotel uh, management right. and uh, r restaurants and things like that. So uh, actually, years ago, uh, uh, we started uh, with the casino uh, uh, academic program, uh, casino management and uh, even some uh, gaming mm -hmm. uh, techniques and uh, not, not how to play, but uh, dealing and things right. like that. And that was in, uh, uh, not in anticipation, but to answer current market needs in Foxwoods or uh, Morgan Sun, Rhode Island, or right. Rhode Island right. yes. So whether or not there is a uh, casino in this region of Massachusetts or anywhere in Massachusetts, uh, we want to continue with this program because the jobs are there in the country. And you may not want to relocate to Las Vegas or right. uh, even Rhode Island, but uh, at least the jobs are there in your train. Uh, of course, if the casino is open in Massachusetts, then uh, that would be all the more uh, attractive opportunities for employment. Mm. So, uh, what has gone on uh, last year, uh, going into this year, is that, uh, for example, we have new academic programs that uh, we're working on. Uh, and one is up for review uh, fairly soon at the Board of Higher Education uh, once our trustees pass it, which it should be fairly soon. Mm -hmm. um, then, uh, and it's all related to casino management and right. uh, uh, the, the culinary arts program is f being further strengthened, uh, hotel management. Uh, so this is really going to be, uh, I think, something that answers the needs of the market, not only in southeastern Massachusetts, but across the country. Mm. And that was one of the, the big academic uh, initiatives that was launched, that was new, relatively new, yes. last year. Yes. Um, I, I want to get into right into to, to the end of last year and, and as we go forward into 2014 and 2015, this academic year. Um, first of all, let's, let's talk about f physically. Oh, yes. um, here at the Fall River campus, if you haven't been here in a while, <laughs> um, if you come by, uh, <laughs> times they are a changing as they That's say. There's right. a lot going on here yes. with uh, the, uh, the groundbreaking in May of the Sprague Health and Sciences yes. uh, building, yes. and also work done in our southern parking lots here, which will be housing a, a uh, solar carport. Yes. So there's a lot of construction going on, but That's it's all right. exciting, isn't it? It is. It's all progress. Of course, there'll be some discombobulations uh, uh, as we go through this. Right, and we're going to talk process. about that later in the show. Yeah, we do have yeah, a segment on that. Yes, I like to avoid that, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's there. Right. It's part and parcel of these, of these projects. So first, the building, uh, I mean, it was uh, quite an honor and a humbling experience right. for the trustees uh, to uh, uh, name the building uh, uh, with my name on it, and I'm very grateful to them. It's going to be a great academic uh, opportunity for our college, uh, a brand new nursing lab, a brand new dental hygiene mm. clinic, um, and up to the date, up to date state of the art uh, facilities, uh, brand new uh, science labs. Mm -hmm. I think uh, some of our science, current science labs will be uh, updated and moved to the new building and refurbished. And so uh, it's a wonderful, we have to keep up for our students. We owe right. them that responsibility to give them the best that's available. So the building is just super. Uh, the other good news about the solar panels and the uh, construction in the parking lot, we're literally going to have a, a roof, if you will, a solar right. roof over uh, the parking lots uh, all on the south side of the campus in, in Fall River. And uh, they will save us up to 80% of our energy costs. Wow. I mean, it's just fabulous. Uh, and uh, we're very proud of it. Of course, uh, 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 the, the costs of... Uh, uh, electri electricians you need a license to install them and uh, all of the expert need help that we get uh, we, we have obtained and we're ready to move it should uh, he said hopefully uh, it should be <laughs> ready in October right. uh, s soaking in the sun's rays and mm -hmm. saving us money so pray for sun as yeah. well <laughs> so while, while there's some changes at the uh, at the Fall River campus um, there's there's some news with BCC's other campuses, I think the, 
the, the one that kind of sprang up very quickly over the summer yes. was the fact, the exciting news, that yeah. we have a dedicated one-stop shop center in Taunton. Tell us how that all came about. Oh, it's just terrific. Uh, it came as a deliverance for us, really. The, uh, the Taunton Catholic Middle School, mm -hmm. uh, the decision was made by the diocese of Fall River to, uh, to move out of the Taunton Catholic Middle School, relocate the students and mer through mergers, and uh, so the school itself became available. Mm. Um, uh, we immediately jumped. We had to jump quickly because a number of, uh, there were a number of other suitors uh, for that building, and so it all happened within a week or so, actually. Uh, uh, no time to even uh, uh, plan or uh, think much about it other than to take it. Right. Uh, and uh, that's what we wanted. And uh, since then, the Board of Trustees have approved taking it, and. Uh, uh, to, we're only licensed okay, in there license, for one year. It's only licensing, right? Yeah. Correct. So we're only licensed in one year, and there are some uh, some uh, facility issues with it uh, in, in the long run. Uh, ADA accessibility right. being one, and of course up to date science labs, uh, all of these things that have to be outfitted. The computer labs are already there and uh, ready for opening. Yeah. Uh, so enrollment is increasing. We've got a really uh, a, a wonderful uh, jolt in the arm, if you will, for enrollment mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with this news and the publicity attending this news. And uh, we have long searched for a, uh, a convenient location, downtown Taunton, uh, for our students and for a campus. And, and lo and behold, we now have it. Uh, and uh, we're very proud of it. The mayor is very happy, and as you know, the local legislators as well. Mm. It, it's, it's good in that it, it, it combines all the activities in Taunton, where last year you had uh, the beginning of day classes at the Kohanit School. Yes. You still had the evening offerings at the Friedman Middle School, and yes. now everything's under one roof. Yes. And that's, that's a great boon and a great, a great location right near downtown. Oh, it's terrific. Parking is available. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that. The consolidation, uh, we were a little concerned about being in the evening at Friedman, in the daytime right. at Kohanit, and uh, plus two other sites had our adult basic education programs uh, day and night. So uh, this consolidation will bring everyone under one roof, credit and non-credit. Uh, the adult basic education training mm -hmm. is very important right. uh, for workforce development in the region, as are the uh, academic programs that we'll have. So. All of BCC uh, in the Taunton area will be in this building. That's great. Yeah. Uh, other big news in terms of one of our satellites, Attleboro, which has been known up until now as a center, yes. has now been designated by the Board of Higher Ed as a full-fledged campus, campus of BCC. That's right. So there is a distinction, correct? There, well, there is a distinction. I think it doesn't matter much to the public. <laughs> no, as long as they get the services. That, yeah, it's something in an academic uh, environment we we think highly of, oh. we make a big thing <laughs> right. of, and it is a big thing right. uh, within our uh, within our academic house, if you will, and that because it certifies that we are now uh, offering full programs and we have the support services that are necessary. Uh, so it, it really is a big thing, even though the, the general public may not uh, wonder what the, uh, they may wonder what's what's the big fuss about. Right, right. Uh, we've always called it a campus right. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so that's worked out very well. In addition, uh, in New Bedford, we have increased uh, uh, our capacity in New right. Bedford. We've expanded uh, in the same building. We've taken over a couple of new floors in the building at 800 Purchase Street, right. and we remain at uh, uh, Union Street as in well the at the Star, Star Store. Store. Right. So we're very excited about that. and. Uh, uh, in the future, you'll, uh, if we have time, we'll talk later about the bond bill. Right. In the future, this but this building that's being built at Fall River is part of the uh, Governor Deval Patrick's bond bill, and next year in 2016, uh, we are supposed to do two uh, bond projects: one in Attleboro uh, for 4.5 million dollars, and one in uh, New Bedford right. for 20 million dollars. Wow. So we're looking for a standalone campus downtown New Bedford as well. Boy, there'll be more disruptions, but it's all, it's all, all for the, all for the, good. For the greater progress. good. The price all, of progress. All for the greater good. Yes. Um, last year, we talked about how in the 2014 fiscal year, there was a change in the budget appropriation process for higher education in Massachusetts, yeah. where there was uh, a, a new formula of how funding mm -hmm. uh, worked, and BCC was the beneficiary of that. Yes. Um, how is BCC's 
funding for this fiscal year, are we still uh, making out better than we were in the past under this new formula? How has it changed? Yes, yeah, it was a terrific windfall for us last year, uh, $2.9 million uh, that we wouldn't have seen. Mm -hmm. and, and to give credit to the legislature and the uh, governor, uh, tw last, uh, the current year that we just ended, I'm sorry, the previous year, right. uh, 20, uh, tw um, 20 million new dollars were added to community colleges. Total. So, that, so total. So, uh, not total. I mean, that was the new additional money. Correct. So uh, we are we we benefited from that. This year's budget, as we go into uh, FY15, uh, 13.2 million dollars was added, a little bit less. Uh, and so we we gained Bristol gained another 1.3 okay. million dollars, which is last year's 2.9. Uh, put us, I think, uh, number two in the most money, new money received, and this year the 1.3 puts us number one, I believe, oh, for wow. the most money received, one or two. And again, yeah. we've we've talked about many times on this show and elsewhere that, you know, Bristol is uh, third highest in terms of enrollment. Now second, That's number two. We're number two last year. We're number two. Yeah. But but in terms of funding, you know, historically BCC has been toward the bottom of, yes. of the funding list. And yes. now at least it's become a little more equitable. Yes. And that's all that, that the college can ask for in, in many respects. Yes. That as long as there's efforts made yes. to help with that, and yes. that, that's been done. And I think it's widely recognized that there inequities uh, existed and continue to exist. And, uh, and slow but steady progress is being made. It's not something that you can fix tomorrow. Uh, it, needs to, it needs time. Uh, and we're very happy about that. Mm. And uh, so we're up to... Uh, over uh, 6,000 uh, FTE, full-time equivalent right. students, and we're in number two place. So, but I, I've never really had a bumper sticker that said we're I'm proud to be number two. two. But, you know, but we're getting there, we're, we're getting there. Now, you talk <laughs> about uh, full-time students. Enrollment up again this year? Are we fortunate well, to see this, that? Well, uh, yes, at this, at this stage, we're up, uh, that looks to be about 3%. Okay. Uh, but, of course, that's subject to change. Sure. and. Uh, it really won't be over till it's over, right. uh, and the, f uh, the facts uh, and uh, data are f what they call frozen, right. uh, which is really mid-September right. uh, before that will happen, not just when the classes start. But it is encouraging. Oh, it's terrific, yeah. yeah. And I'm sorry to say that elsewhere around the state, uh, you know, that uh, the enrollments are flattening or declining, and it's because uh, largely, not only, but largely because of the uh, demographic uh, Popula in the population of Massachusetts, high school population mm. is declining. Mm. Um, I, I really hate to end our, our segment on sort of a down note, but all the successes at the college over the past year was, was tempered a bit with the, the passing of uh, the chairman of the Board of Trustees, Fernando Garcia. Many people may know Fernando through his business ventures in this region, but he was a great champion of, of BCC and uh, uh, left us too soon, but uh, left a lasting impact. Oh, he was a wonderful person and one of those towering personalities. Mm. Uh, lit up a room whenever he walked in. And a great lover. Uh, lo he loved BCC. A great leader of BCC, and uh, we miss him uh, uh, very much, and uh, continue to miss him. He uh, he was quite a personality, statewide as well right. as at Bristol. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, if there is good news to this situation, we have uh, Joseph Marshall right. is our new chair of the Board of Trustees, appointed by Governor Patrick. Yeah. He was an existing trustee, so it is, and an alum, so he knows uh, all there is to know about Bristol Community College. We're glad to have him. So as we move forward into, into the new academic year, there's a lot to see physically, a lot of changes, a lot going on academically. And uh, it's setting up to be another another great year. So I appreciate um, your time, Dr. Sprague, and we'll we'll you. talk again throughout the year. Oh, uh, look forward to it. Thank you. We'll have more of around BCC right after this. Excuse me. Didn't you see the signs? You can't park here. We've got new solar canopies going up. Lots nine and ten are all torn up. That's 320 parking spots we've got to make up for while this stuff gets finished. The start of the school year is going to be wicked busy. Do you understand? Yeah, you understand. Look, I'm going to let you off with a warning for now, but you got to move your car, okay? You can park at Durfee or Bishop Connolly and take a free shuttle. Or you can visit bristolcc.edu slash parking for updates and information. Beep, beep. But I do like that car, though. Is it supercharged?
Welcome back. As we mentioned in our interview with President Sprague, BCC has improved upon providing access to education to those in the greater Taunton area. The opportunity for BCC to consolidate its offerings in Taunton materialized quickly over the summer after the Diocese of Fall River decided to close a middle school which once housed the Coyle High School near the city's downtown. BCC worked quickly to license the building, now bringing all of its Taunton operations under one roof. State Senator Mark Pacheco, one of the political leaders who spearheaded the deal, says the new center is a testament to the forward thinking of all parties. I can't tell you how excited I am about today because I think all of you that are involved in public education and all of you that are involved in uh, Coyle Cassidy and the diocese education programs, you all have a vision. You can see and, and you hope to see those young people, people of all ages, have that opportunity to be able to see a new, brighter future for uh, working families in this region. Taunton Mayor Thomas Hoy was also instrumental in making the new center a reality. He says the benefit of BCC's role in the city go beyond just the new physical location. Not only for the students in, in the higher ed opportunity, but also for our downtown businesses and such that are going to see a, certainly an increase in business with the students that will utilize this campus. This is something that we've been working on for some time, and it just sort of all came together. It's a wonderful feeling and a great day for Taunton. A few days after the ribbon cutting to open the new facility, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren toured the center. During her visit, she spoke with some students who will be the beneficiaries of the new location. Desmond Weathersby is one of them, and he says the one-stop shop that is now in Totten makes it easier for more local students to attend BCC. It cuts down on travel time. Um, I don't have to go from Kohanet to Friedman. Um, I can just get everything I need right here. Very close to the highway because I don't live in Taunton anymore. So I can just jump on 24 and go to Randolph where I live and come back here. So it's a lot more convenient for me. Classes this fall in Taunton are offered weekdays from 8 a.m. through early evening. The center's central location will also be popular for city residents to take part in the college's library and computer lab resources. We talked earlier about the exciting physical changes taking place at the Fall River campus. But with those changes come the need for students, faculty, and staff to make some adjustments when arriving on campus. Along with the construction of the Sprague Health and Sciences Building, BCC is also undertaking the construction of a 3.2 megawatt solar carport facility that will span five parking lots on the campus's south side. Vice President of Administration Steve Kenyon says during the first month or so of the semester, the college will be without 320 parking spaces at any one time, although at least three of the five lots will remain open. He says the college has a plan to make up for the lost parking. We have 150 available at Conley, Bishop Conley High School, and there's about 40 on the north side of Langley. We have 50 at Durfee High School near the tennis courts, and we've been allowed to park on both sides of Ellsbury Street, both the east and the west. So that's another 60, 70 parking spots. And we've also identified another 80 spots on campus that will be painting lines on the grass and, and try to keep some semblance of organization. And we will have campus police and contract security out and about to help people identify, you know, where there's available parking. And, um, Lastly, there'll be a trolley. To, there'll be a trolley stop on at BCC on Ellsbury Street, and there'll be a trolley stop at Conley. And what that trolley will do, we'll, we'll make a continuous loop all day long, and it'll pick up folks at Durfee, at, at Conley, along Langley, along Ellsbury Street, and, and you know, bring them back to uh, 777 Ellsbury Street. The trolley service will run from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays. Now, the construction has also resulted in the closure of the main road at the Fall River campus. 
Traffic has been diverted in a way that access will still be available to all lots in Fall River. So keep in mind, be aware of these changes and make adjustments to your schedule where necessary. BCC's New Bedford campus this summer instituted an innovative marketing plan to get the community interested in taking classes. They gave the public an opportunity to sit in on a BCC class. Now that's nothing new, but what was different was that this class was held outdoors at a downtown park. What really goes on in a class at BCC? We have students come in and we talk about admissions, registration, but we never really get to um, have them see what goes on once they get into the classroom. Sometimes they may be hesitant, but if you can just see that, you know, it can be fun. Education can be fun. The students that are taking therapeutic massage um, at our campus came out and we had a class, but along with the class, we invited uh, community members that uh, walking by and came to see it to get a free 15-minute uh, chair massage and that was wonderful. We had about 30 people partake in the massages and the students were able to practice the techniques they were learning that day in class and um, it worked out well. It is nice when someone can watch and see what really goes on inside the class because again when someone's thinking about school they can think about admission and what the whole process is to get in but I think a lot of people may be hesitant when they haven't really experienced what goes on in the classroom. I think what we want people to see is just take a look, come by, just take a listen and maybe, maybe you'll see the college is for you. BCC has a long summer tradition of providing opportunities to local grade school children through its Kids College program. Well, that program was back again this summer with a few changes to the curriculum. Kids College has run for uh, at least the last 25 years and this year we decided to change it dramatically. So we have three different tracks. We have the Lego engineering track, the cooking track, and the theater arts track. So we took the tack this year that we were going to change it so that it was a full day program for a full week. So you knew when you signed up your child for the Lego track that that was going to run from 9 a.m. in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. And then for the following week, you could sign up for a different track. The activities are fun, and it's, you make, make a lot of new friends here, and it's exciting. And you do learn stuff while you do the stuff. In the motor, it makes this thing fly down. It's like this, if this mouse gets here, then it catches it. It makes an evil noise. For example, in the Lego track, they're building some really cool pieces that they're working on uh, over the course of the week to build their final piece and animate their final piece at the end. And they're using that computer software a lot more intensely to make the uh, projects that they work they've been working on come to life. It's called the Mystery Machine. This part over here kept uh, not working. It wasn't really working well, so I had to switch out the gears. The activities that we do is, like, I think you learn good stuff. Kids College is important because it introduces kids to the college environment. So they're getting some fun, they're getting some education, and they're learning something in their track class. But it, what the main thing about it that the college um, really tries to provide is this idea that from a very young age, these kids are already in, in school and that this is where they're going to go as they grow up, that they're familiar with the college setting, they're familiar with BCC. I think it doesn't waste your time on summer. The new academic year brings with it a new intercollegiate soccer season. The BCC Bees men's squad is looking forward to another successful campaign. BCC men's head soccer coach Arsene Oka enters his second full season at the helm of the Bees. He's coming off a 2014 season when the club went 9-7 and seven and advanced to the Region 21 championship game. This season, Oka has only four returning players, but he still has high expectations. I am very satisfied, and as I said, I'm a happy coach right now because the players that I'm having right now, first of all, they are competitive, they got the skills, they have like a, the desire to, to succeed. So I'm just happy to have this group. And I think this year we are, we are going to do better than last year. The men spend much of September on the road, but most of October at home. Check out the BCC website for the team's schedule and make a point to stop by Bishop Connolly High School for a match or two. 
That's all for Around BCC. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.